Talkers, I am here with a sew along today. It's quite a technical sew along, a sew along with lots of technique tutorials in it, little tips and hints, and that is for making a quilted jacket. The jacket that I'm making is the Megan Nielsen Hovia jacket. It is a pattern that is full of choices, options, and versatility. You can change the length of the jacket so it can be cropped or hip length or waist length. Um, you can make it a little bit longer so you can have a long sort of frock coat style. There are different closures so you can have a tie front, no tie at all or you can play around with your own closures. There are also options for uh, the sleeve to have a cuff at the bottom but you can keep that uh, flat if you want to. You can bind the edges or you can have a collar. The possibilities really are endless and add into that your fabric choices and it's a really really great pattern to choose. The fabric that you choose will determine the techniques that you use to put your jacket together. So today I'm using a cotton gauze which is a really light cotton. It's got a sort of crinkle effect, um, a, a bubbly texture and I'm pairing that with another light fabric which is uh, just a poly cotton um, but again that's a lightweight because when you're building up layers of this jacket, you need some lightweight layers, um, otherwise you will very quickly get very thick seams. A few other things to note about your fabric choice. You need to pre-wash your fabric because you don't want one to shrink at a different rate to another when you wash it. So I've washed both of my fabrics actually on quite a high um, uh, temperature because I don't want one of them to react differently to another. I want all the pre-shrinkage out of the way. I have pressed my cotton so it's nice and flat. I haven't pressed the gauze. If you press the gauze, you knock all the crinkles out of it and you also make it, I don't know, like 10% bigger because you've pushed all the creases out and you've made the fabric piece bigger. And then when you wash it, it shrinks back up again to try and put that crinkle texture back and then you'll get a re different reaction between the two fabrics. So don't iron your gauze, keep it nice and crinkly and try and keep that texture in your jacket. When you're cutting out, you also need to make sure that everything is as flat as it can be because um, you're work you've already got the discrepancy of three different layers that are going to fit together. So keep your paper pieces flat, keep your fabric um, pressed and keep this one, the gauze one, smoothed out as much as you can. Obviously, if you're not using gauze, you can have a slightly easier life. Um, I chose gauze today to show you a sort of tricky fabric to, to work with. In between my gauze and my lining, I'm going to have a batting or wadding. I do flip between the two words, so um, you might hear me say either of those in the video. And first of all, I'm going to do a test piece to check that I can get all those layers together with a really good stitch length. You don't have to quilt the jacket, you can make this jacket as a single layer, you can make it quilted on the outside with a loose lining on the inside. So I'm going to show view B today, which is a quilted jacket of three layers. Um, I'm going to try and make it reversible, um, not sure if that's going to work out, but I'm going to try a few techniques to see if I can have my jacket on the pink side or the tartan side. At the end of the video today, I'll tell you um, what other adjustments you might need to make if you choose different fabrics. But to give the sew along a little bit of continuity, I'm going to stick with view B. I'm going to cut out my fabric now on the cutting table. I'm going to use pink and shears, which I don't always use, um, but because I'm going to be handling my fabric and manipulating it a lot to do the quilting, I want to make sure that it's not going to fray. The other thing that I'm going to do, which is really different to my normal cutting out and the normal things that I tell you, I'm not going to cut um, my pieces out accurately. I'm going to have lots of space around each pattern shape so that I've got room for movement under the machine when I'm quilting. So you will see that in the video. I'm cutting out the pattern piece and some space around the outside and then I'm marking that with some chalk so I can see the actual pattern shape and the space that I've got to run out my quilting.
I'm using my basic sewing machine today um, this one really takes layers of fabric really really well I've put my walking foot on so that I can keep those three layers um, in sequence with each other I've also got a little quilting guide but it's not essential you can mark your quilting out on your fabric with uh, a marking tool but I'm using my uh, quilting guide here I've also um, got a couple of bobbins ready because when you're quilting I've quilted half the jacket already and I'm already on my second bobbin so I'm keeping my bobbins nice and full so that I can keep swapping in and out I've also used two reels of my coloured gutterman thread so I'm getting ready for that one next when you put your walking foot on it's got a little arm and that goes over the uh, screw that holds the needle in so that hooks onto there you might have to change the hand wheel to get it in the right position and then you put the screw on the side make sure it's firm because a walking foot is quite rattly it's quite a heavy weight I'm also going to add my um, seam guide for quilting you might have one of these in your kit and not know what it is it's got a long arm on it and in the back of the walking foot there's a little hole and I'm just stabbed it through there and now I can move this from side to side and this will follow my previous line of stitching so I will always have the same distance between the needle and the seam guide to help me get through the layers of fabric I also have a quilting needle in my machine a quilting needle has a narrower shaft just above the um, threading hole and um, so your needle can go in and come back out without catching any layers of thread it does work quite well um, I'm glad I've got it it feels really smooth uh, and I'm not getting any pulling through of the batting onto the main fabric transfer your grain line to your pattern pieces you can use chalk or you can use a tacking thread to make a guideline so the first line of stitching that you put in is your grain line one because that's going to set the angle for all the other rows of stitching and then you put your seam guide on top of that row of stitching it doesn't squash it down like a foot it just runs along the fabric and Transfer your grain lines to all your other pieces of fabric. I'm using a chalk wheel because it, the chalk sits really nicely on the bubbly gauze. And then I can start quilting using that line as my first line of stitching. Now you put the paper pieces back on your pre-quilted layers and cut them out as one piece you're going to do that with all of your pieces the sleeves the two fronts and the back and the pockets just be aware if you're cutting opposites you'll need to flip your pattern piece over so that you get the right color on the side that you want so we want two slanted pockets still got my grain line there I've matched that up with my quilting line when I've replaced the paper piece I've lined the paper piece up with the grain line that I drew originally I have two opposite pockets for the back piece match the tissue on the fold cut around this half of the back and then flip your pattern over to create the other half of the back if you try and fold this in half and cut it it's a lot of thick layers so it's better just to cut it now in one layer and flip the pattern all of the pieces are now cut out to true size 
I've cut out my binding strip at five centimeters and I made sure that it's on the true bias because you've got that curved shape around the front of your jacket and if you don't cut your bias on the true bias 45 degree angle then you'll get lots of puckering around the edge of your jacket and that's right on show right at the front so cut your bias binding on 45 degree angle so that's if you had a square and you fold it in half it's the diagonal line angle and you're going to make some binding so that you can put your jacket together first of all the binding goes across the top of the pockets Cut a piece of binding the length of the slanted pocket and then with right sides together open out your binding and pin one folded edge to the raw edge of the pocket. So just do this all the way along and then sew in that creased groove. The stitching line is lined up smooth from the right side and as you turn it over i'm going to trim out a tiny bit of the batting not lots if you trim out too much the binding goes all floppy so it needs a little structure but just enough to allow for the fold there we are look it was a really tiny piece but that's allowed the binding to have a bit of uh, folding room I'm using clips now because I'm getting a few more layers. It's a sort of quilting technique. And I'm going to hand stitch this because um, machine stitching would show on my right side. These sleeves here are inserted as uh, tubes or circles, but I would like to insert my sleeves flat so that I can try and finish that seam so that I can make it reversible. I have made a run and fell seam um, on the inside of my jacket which makes it reversible so I'm sewing from the right side right sides together and then from the wrong side I'm trimming out the batting and turning under the seam allowance to make what's called a run and fell seam um, it's like a flat fell seam but you're uh, binding and finishing the edges on the wrong side but it means that I can wear this jacket as a reversible jacket so I've taken a really generous 1.5 centimetre seam and then I'm going to halve one of the seam allowances and because I want my run and fell to run to the back of the jacket, this is the back of the jacket, I'm going to take the back one out, well more than half, I'm going to take it right back. Next, because I can't fell this seam because of the wadding again, I didn't forwards and back at the end of my quilting, so I'm going to peel those apart. So now I've got my nice bit of fabric for felling, but I also want to take all of this bulk out as well. What I'm left with is the batting seams exposed and I'm going to use the lining fabric to roll over and pin in place. And that will conceal the batting so that I'm able to wear it from the reverse. I need to be pretty accurate when I sew this because I will get the seam line showing on the right side so obviously if we're making it reversible we want it to look good from both sides. I'm just going to work on pressing that down and covering all of the seam allowances. Finish all of this and then sew down here so that I get a run and fell. The sleeve pieces don't have any notches so it doesn't matter which way around you put them but obviously you want to make sure that you've matched up the centre seam so you can fold your sleeve in half and just make a little clip to show where the centre is match that up with the shoulder seam I'm using clips again because there's 
quite a few layers here now two layers of wadding and all of the fabric layers I'm going to put all of that sleeve into the sleeve hole once you've got the sleeve in you can then do the run and file technique. It's really good because it holds the sleeve down and stops it bulking out at your bicep. So it keeps that bit there look really nice and flat. Next, you're going to add on the pockets and stitch within the seam allowance. Same on the other side. And then you can sew up the side seams. Again, I'm back to the clips because there's quite a few layers, especially under the arm. If you aren't using the run and fell technique, you can put seam binding on the inside, but you'll need to trim out some of that bulk so that your seam binding lies nice and flat. Put your binding right sides together and pin in place. So you're going to conceal the raw edge inside the binding. Once it's sewn, just keep trimming out so that you've got enough room for your binding to fold over. Your binding will now completely enclose your seam. You can hand stitch this or sew it on the machine, depending if your jacket's reversible. On the front, you can also put a little label. So I've got the curved front and I'm adding a label along that seam binding. So when I'm wearing it reversible, um, the label will show. you need to add your hanging loop I'm not adding one in mine because obviously I don't want the loop to be on the outside but it's at this stage that you would add your hanging loop and you can now put binding around your neck seam and all the way around now you're going to have quite a few layers where your pocket is attached to your jacket so you might need to lay out some of that seam um, try not to layer it out unevenly because um, binding won't make up a thickness so you'll end up with a sort of flappy binding so just try and layer out one seam but keep one at the 1.5 seam allowance because that will keep your binding um, a little scaffold for your binding to sit flat on. Next take your binding that you've made however you've made it I made mine on my machine but you can do it with um, your iron and ironing board you start at the centre back fold under the bias binding and put it right sides together and follow the same process as for the pockets. Just make sure you've got enough uh, ease around the curve of the neckline, don't make it tight. The same goes for around the curve of the pocket. Sew that in place, join on your bindings. Fold over your binding. I'm going to hand sew mine, but you could machine sew it as well if it's just going to be an inside seam finish. To complete the jacket, I'm hand sewing um, around here so that I don't get any marks on the right side, but it's still reversible from the wrong side. Doing them quite small because I don't want them to peel open. Make sure you get these ends nice and flat. And we're going to do the same with the cuffs so that you can have them folded back if you want so they look good from both sides. And then your jacket is finished. Here is Hovia finished. Got quite a high pocket, 
you can do a lower pocket, it depends what you're going to use them for. You can also divide the pocket. It's padded, but it doesn't feel like it's wearing me. It's really, really soft. And that's the gauze because the gauze is very pliable. I really recommend that you do that run and fell on the sleeve seam because whereas on some versions you just see a little lump there and that's because if you found the inside and you've got sleeve binding on that sleeve shape it makes it just a little bit bulky so that's kept it really nice and flush and it's completely reversible and that's because I did those run and fell seams on the shoulder and the sleeve and on the underarm I used the bias binding technique that was shown in the instructions but because that's under my arm you've not obviously got that sort of um, tube of bias going around the outside so I did a little combination of techniques and that's what the Hobie jacket is all about you need to choose your look then choose your fabrics and then choose your techniques and methods for putting them together the instruction book is really comprehensive so depending on which view you make there are different techniques so um, it shows you how to unline the pockets, it shows you how to use belt loops to have a belted version. Um, it also shows you how to put the sleeve in as a tube or you can put it in flat. So depending on which view you choose will be which methods and techniques you choose. For an unlined longer view jacket you can use a Minerva Core range boiled wool. It's a really cute fabric, it's got those little fuzzy balls on it, it looks really good. And this one isn't lined, but it's making a cosy coat and it's also not quilted, but you can see um, it doesn't need to be quilted. You can have that sort of casual autumn jacket. You can make a really different style, uh, sort of throw on long line cardigan from this pattern. And this one is made in linen. It gives that sort of really flowing, gentle uh, workwear uh, jacket which means that you can sit down in it you could keep it on for a little while and you wouldn't feel really bulky and that drop sleeve just drops down a little bit more and um, this person isn't wearing lots of layers under it because they're wearing it as a casual throw on we also have some fabrics that are pre-quilted so if all of that sort of quilting part of the process isn't your thing you can try a, one of our quilting fabrics so these already have a diamond print on them they're really quite firm and um, the wadding on the back is already attached to the fabric and then you can line your jacket so the version you would make from the instructions is you make an outer and an inner and you combine them together around the neckband this one comes in quite a few different colors although the pattern is for woven fabrics you could also try um, a jersey quilted fabric so this one is a, a jersey quilted fabric so you'll get a really soft um, shoulder line here because the more layers you use um, the more you'll get a sort of quite a bulky shoulder this jacket has got quite a lot of ease so it's got room to have a jumper underneath to wear some other layers underneath so if you choose the jersey quilted fabric you'll get a sort of softer look all around you can also experiment with different closures. You can try a little hook and eye if you just want it to be quite invisible. You can do your own thread bar and hook and eye so it really does just touch in the centre. You've got the tie option which is from here obviously, all belted. Or you could have a look at any of our closures and see um, what you would like. There's those uh, corded closures, they look really nice if you can get one that matches your fabric choice. If you decide to make a patchwork version which is a completely feasible idea. Um, you will have to make sure that if you're quilting it and padding it, that um, you take out a little bit of your seam allowances around the outsides, because if you've got three layers of pocket and three layers of jacket, and you're trying to put seam binding on, you'll have all of the uh, seam allowances from your patchwork pieces joining together to try and take out some of your seam allowance on your patchwork pieces. It's a great pattern for stash busting, so you could try um, using different pieces for different parts and also that sometimes works together really well if you use hand stitching. The hand stitching doesn't have to be shashiko, it could be any kind of um, embroidered running design. Well today's so long has been a bit of a mammoth journey but um, I hope I've shown you lots of different techniques depending on which uh, type of fabric that you choose. 
If you'd like to check out other Hovia makes, then do head over to Minerva and check out all the Minerva makers. And also we would love to see your Hovia jacket if you make one. You can do this by making a free account and you can upload your makes and do a little write up if you'd like to. We'd love to see lots of photographs. You don't have to professionally model them. If you're stood in the garden, that's great. If you're stood in your kitchen, that's fabulous too. Thank you very much for watching. Do call again for more sew alongs, tips and tutorials soon. Thank you.